This is the science about what's happening, what we know that Roundup Glyphosate and all the 500 products in Australia are doing. So the IRAC said that it's a possible carcinogen, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Court cases prove that. It collates these minerals that you see above. Sulfur, iron, copper, zinc, calcium, manganese, cobal cobalum, manganese, uh, manganese uh, what else have I got? Molybdenum and selenium. Now I want to show you something. There are 299, 291 enzymes that glyphosate will downregulate because it doesn't allow those minerals to go into the coenzyme or to get into the enzyme. That is frightening. So there are 291 that we know. One of them is glutamate synthesis. Another one is, um, which we'll be talking about, is the shikimate pathway. Now, we make, do most of these enzyme pathways, but we don't do the shikimate pathway. And this is how glyphosate has got its foot into the door. So the shikimate pathway is done by bacteria, fungi and plants. It produces tyrosine, phenylalanine and tryptophan. They are three amino acids that we need to eat in order to make the proteins that we need to make for our neurotransmitters. Things that make us think, that don't give us anxiety or depression or no, no autism or al no Alzheimer's or dementia. We need these and yet they are being destroyed out of plants because the shikimate pathway is not being produced. It also produces coenzyme Q10 as well as, now I've got iron up there but it's actually um, enterobacter which is an iron carrier. So it stops that being produced and folic acid. Don't you find it odd? In 2009 um, they put folic acid into our foods and they'd been spraying glyphosate that was pulling, that stopping the shikimate pathway from happening. I remember when I was listening to um, Dr. Stephanie Seneff and she kept going, the shikimate, 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 shikimate. And I finally went, Stephanie, what the frick is the shikimate pathway? But when you understand the shikimate pathway and your gut bacteria make 90% of your tyrosine, tryptophan and phenylalanine, and if they're not making it, then you don't get it and you can't make your neurotransmitters. We have an increase in nervous system problems that are happening. It's an antibiotic to your microbiome. And if you're eating it every single day in your breakfast cereals, your breads, your toast, your cheeses and everything like that, then you will be slowly eroding. The only two that they've figured out are resistant to it, which is really scary, is clostridia difficult. And you know what diff stands for, difficult because it's hard to get rid of, as well as salmonella. And what about all the salmonella poisonings that we're seeing now on cucumbers and lettuce and all these things? It damages the epithelial tight junctions of not only the gut, the blood-brain barrier, the blood vessels, but the kidney tubules. Which means this, is that you have an open gate and everything that comes in, the food that you put into your body, undigested proteins, viruses, bacteria, enter into your body without any stopping because it opens those gates up. And then if you've got heavy metals, those then head up into the blood, the blood brain, uh, the brain, the blood brain barrier is compromised, it then goes into the brain. And we wonder why we have brain fog. We wonder why we have all these mental issues that we're seeing today. In my, in everything I've done, and I'm a, you know, I'm the biggest foodie of all, I believe that this is the straw that's broke the camel's back. And if we can do something about it, how many are in here? 600, maybe 500, I don't know how many are in here. Can you imagine if you go back to your community and you start to educate people about this, the changes that we can actually make? Uh, okay, other things is it enhances the damaging effects of other foodborne um, chemical residues. So clopyrifos, which is a pesticide, has just been banned because it causes brain developmental problems in a developing brain. But it's been sprayed on our food. Pregnant mother drinks or eats or drinks whatever's got in it and then that damages the development of the brain. I hope I'm making you mad because that's my purpose is to get you angry so that you do something. So it down-regulates vitamin D. You wonder why we've got a vitamin D problem. Destroys the ecology of the soil. Uh, it also um, harms embryonic and umbilical cells. That's more science. Um, inhibits methionine. 
I, I always wonder if this MTHFR has nothing to do with that. It's the methylation process is being um, downgraded because we don't have the minerals in it to make the enzymes so we can't keep going. So it's, it's a question that I've got. Uh, it replaces glycine in the amino acid chain. Because remember, it's a glycine. It's an amino acid with a methyl and a phosphonate. So it's replacing glycine. And, and this is a theory. It's not been proven. But it's a theory that Dr. Stephanie Seneff is working on that it's replacing glycine in the amino acid chain. So for enzymes that are glycine, 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 and then it might have another couple of amino acids, that's going to create a problem. So she's trying to correlate them at the moment. Suppresses the liver cytochrome um, P450 enzyme. She kept saying that to me and I still really don't understand it, but it, I do understand this, that it impairs bile flow. Hmm, interesting how many people are getting their gallbladders out. You, you just have to think of the practicalities of what have happened. Impairs um, activation of vitamin D, which we talked about. Impairs clearance of um, retoic acid, leading to congenital developmental disorders such as spina bifida. And we put folic acid in. We've been warned.